welcome to Rising. We have a great show prepared for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in, and happy Thursday. And happy Thursday to you, Brianna. Happy Thursday right back to you, Robbie. Well, let's talk about the news. That's what we do here, right? It's my favorite topic. We're back to the horse race. Another poll shows that former President Trump is leading the 2024 race by more than five points. A new National Harris X Messenger survey finds 48 percent of voters support Trump compared to 41 percent for Joe Biden. That's a seven point deficit. Add Robert F. Kennedy Jr. into the mix and he takes 12 percent of the vote, expanding Trump's lead to nine points. Hmm. Now, yesterday, RFK Jr. announced that he has gathered uh, enough signatures to appear on New Hampshire's general election ballot in November. Here he is making the case for his electability on Fox News. My favorability ratings are now better than either President Trump or President Biden. I am beating both President Trump and President Biden in Americans, all Americans under 45 in the six battleground states. I'm, uh, I'm beating them across the country, but uh, very, very decisively with independent voters that are now, which are now the biggest party this will be. The first election in, in American history where independents are now the biggest self-identified party. Um, I'm gaining points in the election about one point a week a month. And I've got nine months and I've got uh, all I need to do is to get the 34 points to win the election. And I'm already at 24. Wow. Average in the battleground states. Are you so on the, I, you know, are you on the ballot in, the, in these battlegrounds? No, but I'll be on the ballot in every state and the District of Columbia. Meanwhile, on the GOP side of things, Trump continues to drastically outperform Nikki Haley in polls. Harris X Messenger polling finds that she's at just 11 percent to Trump's 74 percent in the party. Haley is marketing herself as the most viable option to the rematch. Quote, no one wants. Watch her latest ad out of South Carolina. Biden too old, Trump too much chaos, a rematch no one wants. There's a better choice for a better America. Her story started right here. America's youngest governor, a conservative Republican, and boy did she deliver. It's a great day in South Carolina. RFK Jr. is making a couple of points there. Uh, assuming that the he pulls uh, that the vote basically that is not for him is split pretty much down the middle, which in most elections it is in, in recent history. He is right that he only has to capture about 30 odd percent of the vote, 34 percent of the vote. And if you reflect on it, so many pundits have pointed out that Trump's core base is only about that 33 percent of the party that obviously once he wins a nomination, everybody decides to vote red no matter who, just like the Democrats do on the other side, but that the core base of support is never that much more than that third of the general Republican public. So there maybe there is really a lane here for RFK Jr. to do what so many people said was impossible. Absolutely, there is, and he's right that his favorability is higher than either of his rivals. Um, he's clearly, he's, and he's drawing support from a lot of uh, different corners. The issue in the past has been that independent and third-party candidates, they can put up some impressive poll numbers, and then that support melts away right before the election. When push comes to shove, even people who indicated they were interested in a third party end up uh, voting for either the Republican or the Democrat. Now, in the, in the Ross Perot uh, election, with the, the last time there was a significant third party vote, um, we have to remember that a lot of weird things actually happened in that election. Like, Ross Perot dropped out at the last minute and then re-entered the race, like, right before the election, which actually shook his base of support. Mm. He might have done better if he had mm. not had this very weird kind of stunt where he decided not to run and then changed his mind about it. Um, so, you know, we're seeing someone getting poll numbers like him, but maybe having a more a steadier hand with, with respect to the campaign he's running could, could make a difference. It's going to be fascinating. Yeah, here's a, a, another thing that could happen is that we have seen kind of a, 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 an interest, let's say, a kind of like a I'm, I'm F RFK Jr. curious interest, style interest from a lot of conservative-leaning independents and conservatives up until this point. 
And it's broadly correlated with the belief that RFK Jr. being on the race helps Trump and hurts Biden. And from the polls we just read, that continues to be the case. But the closer he actually gets to capturing a third of the vote as compared to Trump's third of the vote, I do wonder if we're going to see a different kind of immediate attention being um, given to him if he's not, if he's going to continue to get uh, friendly, relatively friendly platforms like the clip we just saw on Jesse Waters' show, uh, whether or not he's going to get the same kind of gracious treatment from folks online like uh, uh, Elon Musk, or if they're going to start suddenly paying attention to the fact that he's been an environmental lawyer, a lawyer for the last 30 years, or the fact that he supports canceling student debt and any host of other Democratic policies because he was running as a Democrat until two seconds ago with Emma Kennedy Democrat emblazoned across his website. I do wonder if that is going to become more and more of a factor as both sides of the uh, two corporate parties decide that he's a real threat. Yeah, I mean, he has an eclectic mix of policy proposals that, that frankly, I, and he, I'm sure, he, and he would explain why they're perfectly consistent. I'm not saying they're inconsistent. A, a lot of the policies of the major parties are inconsistent, and then a lot of them overlap in a way, in ways um, the a actual American voters don't like. Um, so, it, but it just so happens to be that there are aspects of his platform that will appeal to liberals, that will appeal to progressives, that will appeal to the left, and there are aspects of it that appeal to libertarians, independent populists, and, uh, and conservatives, and even some Trump supporters. Uh, David Weigel, semaphore reporter who we've had on our show, he said when he covered um, uh, RFK Jr.'s campaign announcement that it was the most ideological, diverse uh, announcement event he's ever attended in his career, uh, which which says a lot about uh, about the kind of support RFK Jr. Yeah, is drawing. and I think that he is where a lot of the country is. Remember, the Democrats have already sort of thrown the book at him. We see what their playbook is mm -hmm. to try to diminish him, and it largely is on the idea that he's uh, a COVID, COVID conspiratory, conspiratory, uh, conspiratorial thinker, um, and that he's an anti-vaxer. They've, they've done their darndest, and it doesn't seem to have deemed him meaningfully. As far as I can tell, to the extent that there is support for him on the left, the only thing that's really diminished it is him coming out as such a hardliner on Israel-Palestine, which, of course, is the very issue that's motivating so many Democratic voters to not want to vote for Biden in the first place. So there is something sort of sure. um, frustrating about there uh, emerging a third way that is not ex actually meeting the needs of the public in this moment. I think that he was really pres prescient and had his finger on the pulse with respect to, let's say, the war in Ukraine. And there are a lot of people who are still going to say, well, one or two wars ain't bad. Let's go with that guy. At least he's, he's halfway to where we need to be. But a lot of people on the left see it as more of a um, systemic holistic problem. And if you can't differentiate, if you can't understand internally why it is that they're very, very similar wars with very similar postures, which say similar things about U.S. interventionism, then they're not going to trust you with one or the other. And they're going to stick with a more consistent choice like a Cornell West, et cetera. I'm also curious to see how those other kind of third parties emerge once we're in a general election context. And there's some legitimacy yeah. that's given to third party candidacies because RFK Jr. is doing so well. Including my own party, obviously, the Liberal Libertarian Party is the largest third party in America. Um, we don't know yet who our candidate uh, is going to be, um, whether we're going to have a candidate who already has some name recognition um, or, or not. Um, uh, there are a number of people interested in the nomination, including um, Chase Oliver, uh, who, um, who was uh, who, who was who ran uh, in the in the Georgia race, the Herschel Walker Senate mm -hmm. race, and was the third party candidate there, and was getting all sorts of accusations that he was, you know, it's it's your fault. Mm -hmm. The, the uh, Democrats it. kept the Senate, yeah. that kind of thing. He doesn't care. We don't, we libertarians don't care at all about that. <laughs> Love that for Sorry, you. deal with it. Cry more. <laughs> um, but uh, but he, he's a, a compelling uh, figure that I like. So we'll, and, and there are plenty of other people in the Libertarian Party I like as well. So we'll see who ends up getting the nomination there. Yeah, we didn't even talk about Nikki Haley, which is probably. Emblematic sign of, of the times. Sign of the times. I, I don't know. I'm, I I still think she's got a shot at Veep. I do. I really do. That is so interesting. I, I mean, I think Donald all will Trump be has forgiven. all but said he doesn't find her to have. He's, but he's he, just but Ron De Sanctimonious got out, and now he's part of the team. Trump Trump forgives and forgets once you fall in line. He just practices a total tit for tat strategy. If you're against him, he condemns you and condemns you and condemns you. When you fall in line, it's over. I think that could happen to Nikki Haley. I mean, I think a lot of his most hardcore online. Trumpiest supporters, you know, Tucker Carlson and viewers of Tucker Carlson absolutely don't want Nikki Haley. And I, frankly, I agree with some of their criticisms of Nikki Haley, but I don't think that is going to stop Trump. However, I, Tim Scott right now seems like the more likely 
pick. I think it's down to them. Yeah, all I'll say is I, I, I know he retired to Sanctimonious, but after he said that he retired. did that— <laughs> After he retired. said that he did that, he actually couldn't help himself and made a jab at DeSantis in his speech in the last couple of days. So I, I don't think Trump forgives and forgets. I think well, DeSantis that made the mistake of, of saying he wouldn't allow Florida taxpayers to pay for Donald Trump's legal expenses. So he yeah. does. What he, a faux pas. He might, he might, for the cameras, performatively forgive, but Donald Trump never forgets. Well, we shall see. Like the true elephant he is. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to do, we're going to keep doing Veep speculation for months <laughs> and weeks to come. How glorious. More Rising right after this.